Hello everyone. Welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number 12, we'll add a feature to show how much health the player has on the screen. But first, let's take up the challenge from the previous lesson. Your challenge was to set up the rhino enemy. Let's take a look. First, I set up the sprite sheets and the animations for the rhino enemy. I set his animation to be the run animation at the beginning. Next, I add the variables needed to move him around. I also add the stun timer integer and the stunned boolean. Let's take a look at the loop. First, we check if the rhino is stunned. If he is not stunned, he's free to progress into the movement code. The movement code is the same as the rock enemies. Whether he's stunned or not doesn't matter for gravity. We'll continue reducing his Y value and have him collide with the ground. Next, let's take a look at the stun timer code. We always count down the stun timer, but if the stun timer is above zero, meaning he should be stunned, first, we check if stunned is false already. If so, we then set stunned to true, and then we set the animation to be the idle animation. This part is important because we only want to set the animation once. Without this if statement, we're going to be setting the animation every frame, and that tends to mess it up a bit. Then we have an else. That covers if the stun timer is equal to or below zero. First we check if stunned is true, and if so, we set stun to false and set the animation back to the run animation. The only part that's left is the player loop. With this get collision, first we check if the player is above the enemy, and if so, we do the standard code for when he jumps on top of an enemy, but we also set the enemy's stun timer to 180. If the player is not above the enemy, we reduce the health by 2 before setting the player to be invincible. Let's see him in action. As you can see, he patrols along the floor just like the rock enemy. If I jump on top of him, he gets stunned for 3 seconds and then resumes running. I can continually jump on top of him to keep him stunned. Now, let's get back to the lesson 12. Showing the player important information can make your game much more appealing. Being able to see how much health the player has left, that's super important. Let's set that up. First, head into the Asset Store and look for the Bolt Power Up Sprite. I'm going to name it Bolt. It'll show up as bolt.png. We're going to create this as a symbol for the health value. We'll also add a number beside it to show how much health the player has. We're going to set this up inside the player start. First, let's create the object. We need to put a self dot in front of it because we're going to be accessing it in the loop as well. I'm going to name it bolt and it's going to be a BG class. Since the BG class doesn't do anything, I can use it as a placeholder image for whatever I want. Next, let's add a sprite to it. I'm going to use that bolt sprite.
Now if I play the game, the bolt sprite is going to show up over here, where the zero, 00 point is. I want it to be up at the top left corner of the screen. I also want to make it a bit bigger. First, let's increase the size of it. Say bolt.scale x equals 2 and bolt.scale y equals 2. Now in order to put it at the top left corner of the screen, we need to do something a bit trickier than normal. Since the player moves the camera around, we need to make sure that the bolt keeps following along with the player. Otherwise, the camera will move and the bolt will disappear off the screen. In order to accomplish that, all we have to do is add the player's position to wherever we want the bolt. Let me show you. So first, let's set its x position equal to the player's position minus 600. This will put it on the left edge of the screen. Next, let's set the y position to be near the top of the screen. We have to say equals the player's y position plus 300. Now this isn't going to work right away because when we set up the level, it sets the bolt's position based on where the player was and doesn't update it yet. So right now it's right above the player and it doesn't move at all. In order to keep it moving, we need to also set its position inside the player's loop, every frame. Copy this code with control C and inside the loop, add it right at the top. Control V to paste. Now, when you play the game, the bolt symbol appears at the top left of the screen and it stays on the screen all the time. Next, let's add the number to show how much health the player has. We'll do this by adding a text object. Underneath the bolt code, we're going to add a text named health text. It's going to be a new text. This is a function to put text on the screen, whatever message you want. It requires three pieces of information. First is the text that you want. Next is the X position. And finally, the Y position. Let's do a test and just say hello at negative 600 and 300. So this is printing the message hello at an X position of negative 600 and a Y position of 300. And there it is. Just like how the bolt was, it does not move right now. It just stays on the screen. We can change many aspects about the text, such as the color, the size, and where it is, and what message it says. We access those just like we would any other variable inside an object. We say self.healthText.fontSize, with a capital S, equals 60. Now the font is much bigger. We can change the color by saying healthText.color Notice that it's a American spelling of color. There's no U inside. And then submit a color as a string. So inside apostrophes, I'm going to make the color white. You can change the color by supplying a different string, such as red. Choose a color you like. I'm just going to use the default white color. Instead of printing a straight message, you can also print 
a variable. Instead of saying hello, what I'm going to say is self.health, and this will print how much health the player has. So I get a number three right here. Now just like we did for the bolt X and Y, we want to keep updating the health text position. Inside the loop, we need to write two more lines of code to do that. We'll say self.healthText.x equals self.x, so wherever the player is, minus 550. Since we want it to be to the right of the bolt, we'll also want to set the health text y. This will be almost the same as the bolt's y position. It's just going to be a little bit higher by 35 pixels to match up properly. Next, we want to make sure that when the player gets hit, the health text updates. Right now, it's just going to stay as 3 forever. We need to do something similar as the previous lines to make sure this works. Inside the loop, we'll say health text dot text equals self dot health. This is the text component of the text object, which might be a little confusing, but it's this part. Whatever we want the text to say is the text component. If we're updating that every frame, whenever we change the health, we will also change the health text. And just like that, it should be working. I got hit by the rock there, and my health reduced to two. Now that we have the health on the screen, we're going to do a practice session. Your task is to add a level timer to each level. First, you'll need to add a variable inside each level's start named level time. You're going to set it equal to however many seconds you want as fair for each level. For instance, level 1 could be 30 seconds. However, remember that there's 60 frames in a second, so you'll need to do some math to figure out how many frames you want it to be. Count down the level time inside the level's loop. Add another text called time text. Set that text to be the level time variable, and set its position to be at the top right part of the screen. You'll need to update its position inside the loop. Remember that you'll need to use the player's position as well to make sure it stays on the screen. If the level time reaches zero, reset the level. Try to figure this out before moving on. We'll take up the answer in the next lesson. I'll see you there.